யூத் எங்கே இருந்தாலும் நான் ஓடி வந்துடுவேன் பிகாஸ் ஐ திங்க் யூ கா யூ கைஸ் ஆர் த ஒன்ஸ் தட்ஸ் கோயிங் டு டிட்டர்மின் த ஃபியூச்சர் இல்லையா இங்கே எத்தனை பேர் வாண்டட் டு பி அன் ஆண்டர்பிரனர் போ எல்லா ஹேண்ட்ஸும் போ கை தட்டிடுங்கம்மா வா வெரி நைஸ் தட் இஸ் வாட் குருமூர்த்தி ஜி வாஸ் டெல்லிங் மீ ஜஸ்ட் நம்ம அந்த போன செஷனில் அவர் சொல்லிட்டு இருந்தார் நீங்கள்லாம் ஆண்டர்பிரனர் ஆகணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு வெரி நைஸ் ஹவு மெனி பீப்புள் ஆர் யோர் ஃபேமிலி இஸ் டூயிங் பிஸ்னஸ் வெரி குட் எக்ஸலண்ட் என்னோடய இதில் வந்து மை ஃபாதர் இஸ் அ ப்ரொஃபஸர் மதர் இஸ் அ டீச்சர் நோ படி இஸ் ஹேவிங் அ ஃபேமிலி பேக்ரவுண்ட் வி கம் ஃப்ரம் அ ட்ரேடிங் கம்யூனிட்டி டஸ் இட் மீன் தட் யூ கேன் நாட் டூ டெஃபினெட்லி நாட் யூ கேன் டூ இட் ரைட் ஸோ ஐ ஜஸ்ட் வாண்ட் டு குவிக்லி டாக் ஒன் ஆர் டூ மினிட்ஸ் அபவுட் வாட் ஐ டூ அண்ட் தன் ஐ வாண்ட் டு டேக் சம் கொஷன்ஸ் ஜஸ்ட் வித் இன் ஃபைவ் டென் மினிட்ஸ் வில் ஃபினிஷ் பிகாஸ் ஐ மீன் டூடிங் இன் சம் அதர் செஷன் ரைட் ஸோ குவிக்லி வில் ஃபினிஷ் வி மேனுஃபேக்சர் தமிழ் இங்கிலீஷ் ஓகே தமிழ் தமிழ் சொல்ல தமிழே சொல்லிட்டா ஓகே சரி நாங்கள் நாங்கள் வந்து பேட்ரி வெஹிக்கிள்ஸ் மேனுஃபேக்சர் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கோம் கோயம்புத்தூரில் ரைட் அண்ட் வி மேக் பேட்ரி ஆப்ரேட் சைக்கிள் ஸ்கூட்டர்ஸ் எல்லாம் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கோம் ஒரு பத்து வருஷமாக பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கோம் லாட் ஆஃப் டிஃபிகல்ட்டிஸ் நல்ல இப்போ ட்ராக்ஷன் கிடச்சிருக்கு நவ் யூ ஆர் ஸ்கேலிங் அப் த வெஞ்சர் ஐ எம் சாஃப்ட்வேர் இன்ஜினியர் பை பேக்ரவுண்ட் கேம் இன் டு மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் கான்ஷியஸ்லி ரைட் ஐ கேம் இன் டு ப்ராடக்ட்ஸ் பிகாஸ் ஐ வாண்ட் டு பில்ட் அ பிராண்ட் ரைட் ஹவ் அ பிராண்ட் கேன் ஹேப்பன் இப்போ ஒரு ப்ராடக்ட் நல்லா இருந்தால் தான் ஒரு ப்ராண்ட் நடக்கும் ஸோ ப்ராடக்ட் பில்ட் பண்ணியாச்சு அந்த ப்ராடக்ட் போய் கன்சூமரில் போய் உட்காரணும் கன்சூமரில் போய் உட்காந்தா தான் தென் கன்சூமரிசம் புரியும் உங்களுக்கு கன்சூமரிசம் புரிஞ்சால் தான் பிராண்ட் கேன் ஹேப்பன் இஸ் இன்ட் இட் ஸோ வென் யூ ஆல்வேஸ் வாண்ட் டு பில்ட் அ பிராண்ட் இஸ் ஆல்வேஸ் த ப்ராடக்ட் குவாலிட்டி இஸ் மச் மோர் இம்பார்ட்டன் தென் வாட் யூ வாண்ட் டு டூ ஸோ வாட் ப்ராப்ளம் தட் ஐ டேட் டு சால்வ் ஐ வாண்ட் டு சால்வ் த ப்ராப்ளம் ஆஃப் ஃப்ரூடல் அண்ட் செமி அர்பன் ட்ரான்ஸ்போர்ட் ரைட் எல்லாம் வில்லேஜ்லலாம் ரொம்ப கஷ்டப்படுறாங்க இல்லையா நீங்கள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா பப்ளிக் ட்ரான்ஸ்போர்ட் இருக்காது ஷேர் ஓட்டோ சம்டைம்ஸ் வராது அவங்களுக்கு டிஸ்டன்ஸே பார்த்திங்கன்னா எட்டு பத்து கிலோமீட்டர் தான் பட் அதுக்கே அவங்க அவ்வளோ கஷ்டப்படுவாங்க ரைட் ஸோ அந்த ப்ராப்ளமே எலக்ட்ரிக் வண்டி மூலமாக வி ஹவ் சேலஞ்ச் சேஞ்ச் இட் ரைட் ஸோ வி ஹவ் கான் அஹெட் வித் அபவுட் ஹண்ட்ரட் அண்ட் செவன்ட்டி ஒர்க்கர்ஸ் ஆர் ஒர்க்கிங் இன் ஆர் ஃபேக்ட்ரி அண்ட் ஃபார்ட்டி பர்சன்ட் ஆர் விமன் ஒர்க் வாஸ் ஒர்க்கிங் இன் அசம்பிளி லைன் ரைட் அண்ட் வி வாண்டட் மோர் விமன் வி வாண்டட் மோர் விமன் டு கம் இன் டு மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் ரைட் ஸோ அதுதான் நான் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கிற இண்டஸ்ட்ரி அண்ட் ஹேஸ் நவ் த இண்டஸ்ட்ரி த கவர்மெண்ட் இஸ் கிவிங் லாட் ஆஃப் சப்போர்ட் ஃபார் திஸ் இண்டஸ்ட்ரி ஸோ ஐ திங்க் இட்ஸ் ஓன்லி பவுண்ட் டு ஸ்கேல் ரைட் ஸோ ஹவு மெனி பீப்பிள் ஆர் ஹியர் இன் மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் எனிபடி இஸ் இன் மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் வாண்டிங் டு டூ சம்திங் வெரி குட் எக்ஸலண்ட் மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் இஸ் இன்ட்ரெஸ்டிங் ஓகே ரொம்ப கொஞ்சம் டிஃபிகல்ட்டாக இருக்குன்னு சொல்லுவாங்க பட் அது வந்து ஸ்கேலபிலிட்டி கேன் ஓன்லி ஹேப்பன் இன் மேனுஃபேக்சரிங் யா ஸோ வித் தட் ஸ்மால் இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் ஐ ஜஸ்ட் வாண்ட் டு சி அதர் எனி கொஷன்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் ஆல் ஆஃப் யூ நல்ல தைரியமாக பட்டு 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 கேட்டுருக்கேன் என்ன டவுட் கொஷின் இருந்தாலும் கேளுங்க நோ ப்ராப்ளம் any doubts any questions go ahead yes okay very good question he asked you are a very small company but you are competing with a big bank called hero avangitta nariya panam muscle irukku how are you competing i think that i was just addressing other things um first of all uh if the product is of quality your product will sustain right when we started in 2008 there was 68 manufacturers today if you look at it there are only hardly about 12 manufacturers so the ones that is actually stay putting for a longer time has the wherewithal to be able to pull it through right so our the kelvi they are much more uh, you know uh, 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 influence much more uh, uh, sophisticated in terms of uh, infrastructure and all that thing every compete panting in kekkararu adu da vandu or entrepreneur or challenge right so one of the challenges that we went through is that we continuously raised money and then we raised only what we need but sometimes too much of money is suffocating you know that no adversity irukra pa da namalukku ideas varum correct ah enga vandu patra kurai irukudho anga da vandu nariya vandu ideas kadikum and the patra kurai irundhal da na vandu jeichen solla mudiyum ipo na romba irundhadna nari nariya irundhadna and the thought process e vandirukadu right இப்போ ஒரு நாங்கள் பத்து வருஷம் ஓல்டு ஹீரோ மோட்டோ கார்ப்லாம் சிக்ஸ்டி செவன்டி இயர் ஓல்டு கம்பெனி எப்படி தைரியமாக நாங்கள் எதிர்கொள்கிறோம் பிகாஸ் வி ஆர் கண்டினியூஸ்லி இவால்விங் இது வந்து லேட்டஸ்ட் டெக்னாலஜி திஸ் டெக்னாலஜி இவால்விங் முதல்ல லெடாசிட் பேட்ரி இருந்தது இப்போ லித்தியம் பேட்ரி இப்போ ஹைட்ரஜன் த டெக்னாலஜி இஸ் மூவிங் ஸ்மால் கம்பெனிஸ் அண்ட் அஜல் கம்பெனிஸ் லைக் ஆஸ் வில் பி ஏபிள் டு மூவ் இட் மச் பெட்டர் இஸ் இட் ரைட் ஸோ
Any other question? I think power cut, uh, 2014, 16 hour power cut, cut shut down. So, yeah, it's very difficult. But in the upper end, the village is going to charge. If you put a phone, you can charge. And you can charge. And you can charge. Now, we have to charge the solar charging. If you charge solar, you can charge the lithium battery, then you will not have much of a problem. Right? So, we are trying to do alternative ways. But I feel that now, with the current government's initiative, they have actually made uh, electricity available in all states. Right, I lost it. Sleep, but another excess electricity here. Another problem. Could be there. Somewhere another question. Yeah. Sure. Okay. His question is, electric is more costly than petrol. Boss, I am not doing four wheeler. I am only doing two wheeler. Even in uh, uh, four wheeler, the right, the current problem is the back cost of the battery. Now, if you look at 5 lakhs, you can get an extra 5 lakhs for full kilometers. Right? Right? So, you are actually getting a petrol tank for 5 years. That's what you do. You will go fill, shut and forget. Here, you get an advance. So, not much of a difference. But, lithium motor battery cost is now going to be. So, I feel that in another about 1, 2, 3 years, maximum 2 years, the price will be even. But when the petrol price or electric one day price almost same as it is now, everybody will move to electric because you normally saw charge in a five amp socket, right? And you charge for two to three, uh, four hours, you get a run distance of about 80 kilometers. In the two wheeler report work, we give both lead acid solution, but the charging time is eight hours, but you get a run distance of 60 kilometers. But in lithium, you charge for four hours, you get a run distance of 80 kilometers, the speed is 50 kilometers. So the trade off is exactly to the consumer. So this one the word maya, okay? As a consumer, the government has given incentive. If a petrol car, I mean, uh, electric car incentive, even for a high-speed electric scooter, we have a subsidy of 18,000 rupees. How many people buy electric scooter here? Anybody is driving electric scooter? One guy, ah, two people, yes. So please continue to drive it. Any other questions? Yes. Good question, actually. Uh, I came to 2008 and came to work. I came to knock and 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 knock now, what is structured training? What is the training? Very important. Now, Guru Murthy Sir has one example in the session. There is no value in the study. 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 That's why the study is beyond a point. Can be only a... It can sometimes suffocate you. If you have a degree, you can have a degree. If you have a degree in the factory, you can have a degree in the factory. You can have a degree. Ina awanggalah, kalau kotor orang matang, right? Awanggalah, nama kotor suit, potong tu kat deh, computer mula di kat deh, awanggalah, itu pun orang papa angga. Nama lek, yang orang ini vala market la panon, elia, mudah jadi time, okay? So, no, no, mudah jadi, I think, so I think, I don't want to take more time, I just came as an intruder, okay? So, lunch time, irkan gula, itu ni time, okay? Maybe, umgul kaga, I will stay back, right? And then perhaps we can have more chat, okay? During lunch time, okay? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, mana stay, please stay. Uh, thank you very much, madam. We want to honor you, please. Uh, so, we are talking about the business explode. There are two electric vehicles. There are telepathy workers. There are two people in the house. She is doing electrical cycles and electric loaders. Madam, you are doing electric cars. Electric cars. Thank you. Thank you. In the esteem, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll quickly call upon Mr. Shanmuganathan Ganapadi to introduce Mr. Subhu Pichapan. Um, private um, venture capitalist and private bank um, banker. So he's in. Uh, he was in Singapore. Uh, sorry, U.S. and he moved to Singapore. He works with Bearing Capital. So welcome, Subhu Pichapan. To help. that wear suits and get MBAs, um, so I think she would never hire me, <laughs> but that's okay. Um, so first, thank you for the introduction, and thank you for IBCN for asking me to speak. Uh, my name is Subhu Pichapan, as was mentioned, I'm a private equity investor at the Bering Group. 
Um, and what I've been asked to speak to you about today is how to think strategically like an investor, not only for your upcoming stock market game, but for yourselves in the long term as you become investors. So in terms of my uh, agenda, I'll start by giving a background on myself to give you context. Then I'll give in an explanation on what exactly is private equity, which is what I do. And then a quick overview of the most common asset classes that you could potentially invest in. And then lastly, three pieces of advice and tips that I hope you will take away from my session here. So in, in, in terms of my background, so I was, I was born and raised in the United States, in Florida. As you can probably tell from my American accent. Um, I went to the Wharton School of Business for undergrad, where, where I studied finance. Um, after that, I went into investment banking, where I worked for Wells Fargo Securities in San Francisco in the M&A group focused on internet and software companies. I then made the transition into working in private equity on Wall Street in New York, where I worked for a firm called Inside Equity. After two years there, finishing up my associate program, I then decided to return to the Wharton School of Business to get my MBA, and I graduated there in 2018 last year. After graduating, I knew I wanted to do private equity, but I wanted to focus on international private equity. My entire life, I've been fully in the US, and I think we all know now that the world is quite small. So for me, I thought it was important to leave the US and go to Asia. So now I work for Bering Private Equity, which is one of the largest private equity firms in the region. They manage over 17 billion in total assets, and I'm on the cross-border team, which basically means that I'm investing in companies that are based in the West, in the US, Europe, and Australia, and helping those companies expand into Asia. And I like to think that I'm the perfect person for this job, because I'm obviously Asian in origin, but all of my experience, I was born and raised in the US completely. Um, so as a result, I'm the perfect person to help bridge the gap to help Western companies move to Asia. I'm 27 years old, so I like to think of myself as still a youth. Um, however, they didn't let me attend any of the events, uh, but that's okay. So what exactly is private equity? I know I've been, I've been saying this, this word quite a bit. So first and foremost, private equity is an asset class that you can invest in. Second, it's a business where a group of PE individuals like myself come together raise capital from outside investors, like mutual funds and pension funds. They take that capital and they identify and acquire undervalued companies, companies that they believe they can buy for a cheap price. And then we own those companies for five to seven years. So we'll sit on the board, we'll hire management, we'll make initiatives in order to increase the value of the company. So we'll be involved day to day on the ground. The idea is that over this five year ownership period, will increase the value of the company. So for example, if we bought it for $100, we increase the value to $500 by the end of the five years, and we sell the company for a profit. A portion of that amount will go back to our original investors, the mutual funds and the pension funds and the endowments that gave us the money, and the remainder of the money comes to the PE investors like myself, the people that work for the private equity firm, the people that identified the company, acquired the company, managed the company, and eventually sold it for a profit. So what I want to do now is do a quick rundown of the most common asset classes that you could potentially invest in. Now, this isn't an exhaustive list, but I think it covers most of the spectrum. So for example, venture capital, private equity, which I explained, hedge funds, mutual funds, real estate, equities, bonds, private financing, and a fixed deposit. So hopefully you've, you've heard of some of these, and maybe even some of you are already in, invested in this. But how do we decide which one of those asset classes you should invest in, right? Because there's not one asset class here that's you know, much better or in a clear manner is more attractive than all the others. Because if that was the case, everybody would be putting in their money in that one asset class, right? So there's a way that you can evaluate each of these asset classes. They each have their own positives, they each have their own negatives, but you need to figure out which one is the best for you. And that answer is unique to every person, depending on your age, how much risk you want to take, etc. So what I want to do is evaluate these asset classes on three dimensions, three factors. How liquid it is, risk, and expected return. So what do these terms mean? Risk is the likelihood of you losing your capital that you're investing in. Your expected return is how much money you're looking to receive for every $1 that you're investing, 
And liquidity is how easy is it for you to take your money out at any time that you want. So what I want to do is run through three examples of these asset classes and evaluate each of them by three of the factors that I talked about. So let's look at venture capital first of all, right? So venture capital is a high risk investment. Why? Because you're, putting in, uh, you're investing in a company that's an early stage company that many times doesn't even have a product, doesn't have a revenue, doesn't have a management team, right? So there's no guarantee that this small startup is eventually going to become a profit making machine, right? So this is a risky investment. But the expected return is very high. So Peter Thiel, who's a venture capital investor based in the US and San Francisco, in 2004, he invested $500,000 for a 10% stake in Facebook. You guys all know Facebook, right? Now, 15 years later, that 10% stake is worth $50 billion, right? So that's a 100,000x return in 15 years. How many investments do you guys know where you can make 100,000x of your money in a 15-year period? Right? So while there's a lot of risk, it's a lot of opportunity for high expected return. Liquidity. So if you guys remember, I said liquidity means how easy is it for you to take your money out at any time. So if, if the VC investor Peter Thiel invested today and decided tomorrow that he wanted to take a stake out, how easy would that be? Well, the answer is it's, it's low. It's not easy. Right? It's very hard to find buyers for your venture capital stake. And also many times there are clauses in venture capital contracts that basically say that you are not allowed to sell for X, X number of years. So next asset class is a fixed deposit, right? And in my mind, this is kind of the opposite of, of, of a venture capital investment. So what is, what is a fixed deposit? It's when you give a lump sum of money to a bank for a fixed period of time, and they guarantee you a fixed return. So what do you guys think? Is the risk for a fixed deposit high, or is it low? Low, right? Why is it low? Well, the only way you're going to lose your money is if the bank that you're giving the fixed deposit to goes bankrupt, right? So I'm from the US. I have a fixed deposit at Bank of America, one of the largest banks in the world. The likelihood of Bank of America going bankrupt, hopefully, is very, very low, right? But what about my, my expected return? So I get a 2% return for one year fixed deposit with Bank of America. It's pretty low. And I think in India, your guys' rate is maybe around 7 to 8%, right? But that's because inflation is very high here. But if you were getting a 7% return on any of the other asset classes that I mentioned before in India, it's not very good, right? And liquidity, again, is, is low, because by definition, a fixed deposit is fixed, right? You've, you've, you've promised to keep your money with that bank for a period of time, so if I change my, my mind three months in, I can't get my money out. And then lastly, equities, right? So this is uh, more apt in, in advance of the stock market game. So I'll talk about risk and return together for equities. Um, so I'd put this at a medium. Why? Because there is a volatility in markets, right? In public markets that you're investing stocks in. And also, it really depends on what type of stock you're investing in. You can invest in a micro cap stock, you can invest in a large cap stock, or you can invest in, in, in index funds. But overall, I'd say risk and return is medium. But liquidity, that's the point that I really want to harp on. Liquidity here is very high. If you recall, the other two things we looked at, venture capital and fixed deposit, liquidity was quite low. But what this means is I can get my money out at any time. So after this talk, if I go back, back to my hotel room, take out my laptop, log into my E-Trade account, I can sell all of my stocks within three seconds, and the money will come in, into my bank account in 24 hours. If you compare this to a real estate investment, so say the same thing, I, I own a property here. After this talk, I decide I want to sell. Well, I first need to call a broker, right? That broker needs to go through the entire process. I finally fire, find a buyer. I need to negotiate a price. I need to hire a lawyer. It'll take months, right? So if you're ever looking to exit something quickly and take your money out, equities is very, very attractive. So overall, I think what you'll see here, like I said before, is that every asset class has its positives and its negatives, right? So you need to understand what they are for each one of these and be able to figure out which one makes the most sense for you. So what I want to do is leave you with three key pieces of advice and tips that I think will be very, very important for you and very helpful as, as you become investors yourself. Number one, do your homework, right? You should not be investing any amount of money in anything without doing a lot of research behind you do it, right? Doesn't matter if you're trying to acquire a company, doesn't matter if you're investing in a stock, doesn't matter if you're buying a real estate property, do your homework, don't be lazy. 
Second, have patience and a strong stomach. What does this mean? So investments, by definition, are volatile in nature. It means they go up and down, right? Have you ever seen the stock price of Amazon? One of the best companies in the world, right? But look at its stock price on a day-to-day -day basis. It looks like this, right? Up and down. But look at it over a five-year period, straight up, right? So what I'm trying to say here, you need to have the conviction to be able to weather short-term volatility and have conviction to hold on to your investment, have patience for the long run. But how do you have that conviction? Where do you get it from? It goes back to point number one. Do your homework, right? So for instance, if I want to invest $100 in Amazon today, before I invest, I'm going to look up their annual reports. I'm going to try out all their products. I'm going to read every news article out there. I'm going to make sure that I have a lot of confidence in the management team. And then I'm going to invest my $100. And then say tomorrow, Donald Trump sends out a tweet right, about, the, about the trade war in China. US market overall takes a hit. Amazon, obviously a US company, takes a hit also. The value goes from $100 to $80 in one day. Now, if I was an average investor, a layman investor that didn't do my homework, I would panic. I lost 20% in one day. I would probably want to sell, right? Because I'm scared my, my $80 is going to go to zero. But that's exactly what you're not supposed to do, right? So for me, if I did my homework, I would say, you know what? The stock market went down in one day, but that's because Trump sent out a tweet. That tweet has nothing to do with Amazon as a company, has nothing to do with its revenues, has nothing to do with how good of a product it is, has nothing to do with its customers, right? So I have the conviction and the confidence that I know it went down in one day, but I know in the long run, this company is a good company and it's going to go up. So I'll be able to weather the volatility. And then lastly, think differently. Think outside the box, right? So Steve Jobs says this a lot, but with Apple. But this think differently doesn't just apply to iPhones, it applies to investing as well. So you can earn a decent re return by following the mass herd, right? I'm not saying you can't. But if you want to earn outsized returns, if you want to earn the super return, if you want to earn the 100,000x on Facebook, you need to think differently. You need to look at companies that no, no one else is looking at. You need to look at stocks that no one else wants to um, buy. You need to look at properties that nobody wants to invest in. That's how you're going to make a super return. Last slide. So the universally agreed master of investing is Warren Buffett, right? And you don't need to get an MBA from Wharton or Harvard or whatever to be a good investor, right? If you honestly just listen to this man, right? You, you read everything he's ever written. You read all his books I have. You watch all, all of his interviews on YouTube. You don't need to get a fancy Ivy League school degree. So I, I just want to share these three quotes. So first, be fearful, fearful when others are greedy and be greedy when others are, are fearful. Right? So this, is, this goes to my advice of think outside the box, think differently, don't do what everyone else is doing. Right? Risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. This goes to my first point, right? do your homework. Right? It's when you don't do your homework and you don't know what you're investing in that risk comes into play. The more homework you do, the less risk you have. And lastly, this is my personal favorite, rule number one, never lose money, and rule number two, never forget rule number one. So the, that's all I had for you here. Hopefully you guys found this helpful. You know, I think I've been very impressed by the youth that I've met over, over the last few days. Um, you guys are the future of the community. Um, I hope a lot of you get into investing. I know there's been a lot of talk about starting your own company. But as an investor, you can do that too, right? So I currently work for a large private equity firm. But my goal is to start my own private equity firm, right? I want to start my own firm. I want to raise my own money. I want to make my own investments. So this is, is a career path that I think is very attractive. I've known from a very young age that this is exactly what I want to do. And, I've, and every decision I've made has been based on this. So if anyone else has any questions on this, wants to do something similar, I'm happy to help, happy to offer my time. Um, you know, feel free to, to give me a call, send me an email. If you're ever in Singapore, if you're, if you're ever in the US, um, happy to help. So thank you very much for your time. So it is going to be a game, stock market game. So if you want to do what you want to do, you can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it.